Life is a big school. We all have to learn. After vanquishing the fearsome Medusa, Perseus embarked on a series of daring adventures that further cemented his status as a legendary hero. In this second part of his epic tale, we will delve deeper into Perseus's incredible exploits and witness the formidable foes he encountered along the way. Come with us as we journey through the captivating world of Perseus, one of the greatest heroes of all time. As Perseus set out on his treacherous return journey to Seraphos, he clutched the gruesome head of Medusa tightly in his hand. The memory of her serpentine locks and petrifying gaze still fresh in his mind, he knew he must remain vigilant, for his path was sure to be fraught with peril. Though the sea was calm and the wind was favorable, Perseus was aware that Poseidon, god of the sea, was not to be trifled with. He had barely set sail for a day when Poseidon, enraged by the death of his loyal servant, unleashed a violent storm to sink Perseus's ship. The waves swelled and the winds roared, pummeling the vessel relentlessly. Perseus clung to the mast, struggling to keep his footing and stay afloat as the ship was tossed about like a leaf in a tempest. As Perseus struggled to survive the storm, a shimmering figure appeared beside him. It was Athena, the goddess of wisdom and battle come to his aid. She extended her hand and Perseus grasped it tightly as she guided him to safety. Together, they weathered the storm, her divine presence keeping them safe from harm. As the storm subsided and the skies cleared, Perseus breathed a sigh of relief, grateful for the intervention of the goddess. He continued on his journey, wary of any more challenges that might come his way, but confident in the knowledge that he had powerful allies watching over him. As Perseus journeyed on with Medusa's head in hand, he came across a dense forest, where he was confronted by a pack of vicious beasts. The snarling creatures were hungry and looked at Perseus with their piercing eyes, ready to attack at any moment. But Perseus was not afraid, for he had the power of the head that could turn his enemies to stone. With a steady hand, Perseus raised the head of Medusa and aimed it at the ferocious beasts. In an instant, the snarls turned into silence and the hungry creatures froze into stone. Perseus had triumphed once again and the path ahead was now clear. As he continued his journey, Perseus faced other challenges, each more daunting than the last. He encountered a band of ruthless bandits known for their cunning and brutality. But Perseus was not deterred. He had the power of the head to protect him. As the bandits rushed towards him, Perseus stood firm and held the head up high. A wave of intense energy emanated from the head, turning the bandits to stone in an instant. Perseus emerged victorious once again, renewed in his determination to complete his journey. And then, Perseus faced a group of warriors who were determined to prevent him from reaching his destination. These warriors were well-equipped and highly trained, but Perseus was undaunted. He brandished Medusa's head, turning them all to stone and effectively neutralizing their threat. As Perseus journeyed on, he faced even more challenges, including treacherous terrain and harsh weather conditions. He was also forced to navigate through a maze of caves filled with dangerous creatures that threatened to overwhelm him at every turn. But through sheer strength and determination, he managed to overcome each obstacle and press on towards his goal. As Perseus continued on his journey, he came across a breathtaking sight. Andromeda, the daughter of King Cepheus and Queen Cassiopeia, chained to a rock, her life hanging in the balance. The reason for her captivity soon became clear. The sea monster Cetus was lurking nearby, ready to claim her as its next victim. Perseus saw through the monster's deception and knew that he had to act quickly. With his sword at the ready, he leaped into action, charging towards the beast with all the courage he could muster. The battle was fierce, and Perseus was pushed to his limits as he dodged Cetus's powerful attacks. But with the power of Medusa's head on his side, he was able to gain the upper hand, slashing and striking with deadly precision. Finally, with a final thrust, 
he drove his sword deep into the monster's heart, causing it to let out a thunderous cry before petrifying into stone. With the beast vanquished, Perseus rushed to Andromeda's side, quickly freeing her from her chains. As he helped her to safety, she looked up at him with gratitude in her eyes, amazed at the bravery he had shown in coming to her rescue. Andromeda's parents were not only grateful for Perseus's heroism, but they were also generous in their gratitude. As a reward for his valiant efforts in rescuing their daughter, they offered him their daughter's hand in marriage. Perseus, touched by their offer, accepted gladly. And so, Perseus and Andromeda were united in a love that had been forged in the heat of battle, a bond that would endure for all time. However, Perseus's happiness was short-lived. When he returned home to Seraphos, he discovered that his mother, Danae, was in grave danger. King Polydectes, who had been pursuing Danae romantically, had seized power in Perseus's absence and was now threatening the safety of both Danae and the fisherman Dictus. With his sword in hand and his heart heavy, Perseus set out to protect his loved ones, knowing that he would once again have to face the trials and tribulations of battle. Perseus knew he had to act fast to save his loved ones. He used Medusa's head to turn Polydectes and his followers into stone, and with the king and his cronies immobilized, Perseus emerged victorious once again. After defeating Polydectes, Perseus embarked on a perilous journey through unfamiliar lands to fulfill his other quests. However, he faced many dangers and knew that he could not complete his journey alone. As he searched for shelter and aid, he remembered tales of the mighty Titan Atlas, who held the weight of the world on his shoulders. Hoping to find a safe haven with the powerful Titan, Perseus made his way to Atlas's land. As he approached Atlas, Perseus could see the immense figure of the Titan looming before him. He asked for shelter, explaining his plight and his need for rest. However, Atlas, being the stubborn and prideful Titan that he was, refused Perseus's request, believing that he had no obligation to help him. Perseus was determined to find shelter and drew out the head of Medusa, turning Atlas into a towering mountain of stone with its fierce glare. The Atlas Mountains in North Africa still stand today, a testament to the power of Medusa's head. After his encounter with Atlas, Perseus pressed on, resolved to complete his remaining quests. As he traveled further, he learned of a sacred garden where the golden apples of the Hesperides grew, possessing magical powers and highly sought after. However, the garden was heavily guarded by the Hesperides, nymphs tasked with protecting the apples, and a fierce dragon named Ledon. Despite the daunting task, Perseus was undeterred. With the help of Athena and Hermes, he knew he could achieve his goal. Deep within a dense forest, Perseus and his companions arrived at the garden, the scent of the apples filling the air, and the sound of the dragon's thunderous roars. The Hesperides, aware of the intruders, stood guard, ready to defend their precious fruit. Undaunted, Perseus approached the dragon, sword at the ready. The dragon was a fearsome sight, scales gleaming in the sunlight, eyes blazing with fury. Perseus knew that it would not be an easy fight, but he was determined to emerge victorious. As the dragon lunged towards him, Perseus skillfully dodged and parried its attacks. Athena and Hermes aided him, providing guidance and support whenever necessary. The battle raged on for hours, but finally, Perseus dealt the fatal blow, and the dragon fell to the ground, defeated. With the dragon out of the way, the Hesperides turned their attention to Perseus. However, Athena and Hermes spoke on his behalf, explaining his quest and the importance of the golden apples. Impressed by his bravery and determination, the nymphs relented and allowed him to take the apples. Perseus returned to his hometown of Argos with his beloved Andromeda and the treasures he had acquired. However, his journey was not yet over. Perseus discovered that his grandfather, King Acrisius, had fled to the city of Larissa to avoid being killed by him. Though hesitant, Perseus knew he had to confront his destiny and seek out his grandfather. Arriving in Larissa, he found the king watching a discus-throwing contest. Perseus decided to participate in the competition to show his grandfather that he had no intention of harming him. However, fate had a different plan. While throwing the discus with great strength and accuracy, Perseus accidentally struck and killed his grandfather. Perseus was heartbroken and realized that he had unknowingly fulfilled the prophecy that his grandfather had tried to prevent. 
He left Larissa and returned to Argos, where he ruled as king with wisdom and justice. Eventually, he passed on the throne to his son and lived the rest of his life in peace. As for the dangerous Medusa's head, Perseus knew that it was best to return it to the goddess Athena. She placed it on her shield as a symbol of her power. With that, Perseus had completed his epic journey, having accomplished feats that would forever be remembered in history and mythology. Thus, the story of Perseus, one of the greatest heroes of ancient Greece, came to an end. Despite facing numerous trials and obstacles, Perseus remained true to his purpose and destiny as a hero and king.